Oh, good. Yes, you are welcome. So we're going to go over a little bit of review. So there's a couple different things I wanted to show you. We'll do the trivia, which is just some questions. There's like 20, uh, maybe a few um, 20 plus questions um, that we'll review with the trivia. And then I just wanted to show you these study guides that are available for you. So the first one here is sort of a study guide of the material that is not necessarily what was presented by the guest speakers. And that is here. And this, I just opened them all up. So now you can see them when you go into Moodle. But so this is just some important concepts. So like when you look at it, drug administration, enteral versus parenteral. So, you know, it doesn't give you the definitions there, but it's saying make sure you review the process, what those terms mean and, and how the, um, the medication is getting into the body. Pharmacokinetics, um, knowing that that's um, paired with this absorption distribution, metabolism and excretion. It's how the medication um, affects the body. And then pharmacodynamics, the way the drug works in the, in the living organism. So mechanism of action, receptor interaction. So these, it's kind of giving you these broader concepts that are important for you to go back and make sure that you remember to study it because there's going to be questions pertaining to those on the final. So um, it's six pages, so there's a lot of information, but if you it, it zeroes it in for you a little bit. So between this, if you go back and you review the quizzes, um, if you go back and look at your other study guides that um, you have the whole booklet of study guides, all of that stuff is is what you can focus on. So you don't, the PowerPoints can be a little bit overwhelming, obviously, because there's so many drug names and things like that. This is very important for you to remember these receptor sites and then the location and what they do. There's um, several questions pertaining to that on the final exam. So be sure um, you've reviewed the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and then the receptor sites. Um, adrenergic agonists, so talking a little bit about the agonists and then the antagonists, um, parasympathetic. Leslie, are we supposed to be able to see this right you now? You can't see it? I, we just still see Moodle. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, let me stop sharing and then I'll go back into this. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't have to, but it would probably make more sense if you could follow along as I'm reading it. So hold on just a second. I don't know, sometimes it'll go from one screen to another, and then other times it doesn't transfer. You know, it's like it's only on the screen that you're sharing. So this is in Moodle, this document here, um, and I was just sort of starting to skim through it. It's six pages of basically your study material that you wanna. Um, so I'm just kind of skimming through here, parasympathetic, autonomic drugs, the agonist and the antagonist, what that's what they're doing there. And then it goes into some disorders. So there's thyroid disorders and some important information there, diabetes, important concepts there, the main three reasons for um, why someone might have diabetes, type one, type two, then it goes into some medications, respiratory, Again, paying attention to those receptors and what they're doing, some medications, some mechanism of, of action. So it's just sort of putting those in a table um, so that you can start to, and if it helps for you to rewrite some of the stuff down into flashcards and then test each other, hopefully you've already done that. So a lot of this stuff is, this is obviously review for the final. So you may have this information already in, in um, like cards or, you know, um, cards that you've written up for previous exams. So this is just highlighting the important stuff that you wanna make sure that you um, go over for the exam. So there's just a lot of antibiotics, antifungals, I guess that's it. Bactericidal, bacteriostatic. So that's one study guide. And then the second one, I'm gonna X out of here. And then I don't know. Let me find the other one. And this one is also in Moodle. 
So this one focuses on uh, the material from the guest speakers. And this, I believe, is all in a big table format. Let's see. OK, so this is going over the drugs. So this is going over cardiovascular drugs, gastrointestinal, neurological, and psychiatric drugs. It's color, kind of color coordinated for you to kind of, for those people who like different colors, everything in red is cardiovascular, purple is GI, and so forth. So these are just. Um, putting them into the categories of the classification of the drug, the drug name, mechanism of action, um, and then some of their effects. Some of the biggest things that I would focus on are dental effects, um, and then some of these classifications. And then no, you know, being able to pull out the drugs with the overall classification. So I would spend time with like the cardiovascular ones, for instance, is probably one of the, the harder ones because there seems to be so many, but you do want to be able to identify some of these medications because it might say on a case study, your patient is taking LASIK, then you want to know that that is, um, for one, it's a cardiovascular drug, but you want to know that it's a um, hypertensive, anti-hypertensive drug. So try and, um, focus in on the overall classification or drug type. That's um, going through the exam and looking at the questions. I didn't see as many um, really super specific with drug names as much as um, kind of more common names, but then that related back to a drug type. So you want to, you do want to be familiar with a lot of these um, more common drugs that you'll see that we keep referring back to that are in red or that are here on this um, this table and know if it's something for diabetes, if it's something for thyroid, if it's something for cardiovascular, something needs to flag in your brain that, oh, that's a heart drug that's specifically for um, hypertension or, oh, that's um, a drug that they would um, prescribe to someone with chronic um, anxiety. So, you know, just for a more recent example, like the benzodiazepines, we talked about that being for just very localized um, times when someone's feeling acute anxiety, but not for chronic anxiety. So those kind of things, you have to have like kind of an overall, we're not going to focus too much on super details when it comes to like remembering um, all these little adverse reactions, or even the mechanism of action sometimes can be um, a little bit super detailed, but you want to know some of the major dental effects that are going to happen. So anything that's going to cause increased bleeding, something that's going to have um, cause um, xerostomia or um, gingival hyperplasia, all of these really big um, oral effects. You want to make sure that you're um, highlighting those. Yeah. Um, so I, and I think everybody like I say this for everybody, we really super appreciate you doing this. This is super helpful. Um, so the ones that you put on here, cause like there's like, so there's so many mm -hmm. in the PowerPoint. So are you wanting us, like, are these the main ones that we should kind of be focusing on that you have listed the medications? I, I think so. I mean, I, to be completely like, up front, the the exam, the final exam is not new. It's it's the same final exam that we've given for a lot of years. So I've tried to com compare and contrast, um, and add in things that are important, and then things that um, you know that you'll see on the exam. So I'm trying to line it up as much as possible without just giving you like a just a play by play of you know of the exam because it's kind of like and I know you guys already know this but it's like it's all important for patient care and so it's like you want to you want to go over all of them but it's a lot sometimes it can be overwhelming I understand that so we try and so yeah I would say what you see here um, are is are very are a, are a good representation of what you probably just need to zero in on but also, it doesn't hurt to just 
contrast it with what you see on your PowerPoints and kind of just say, okay, you know, here's this, are there any others that I'm missing? But, you know, for the most part, I think I would dedicate your studying to um, these study guides. And then the ones that you have had also in the in the booklet and then your quizzes, all of those together, all those tools together will, um, I think, prepare you really well for the exam. Um, so these are, this is just basically the medications. This study guide is pretty much just written in the, in um, for the medications to kind of help you organize those since it can be pulling out things like what affects local anesthetic, how many cartridges, what, you know, group of antidepressants affects local anesthetic, things like that, that are just very specific things that you have to know in clinical practice. Those all those things are going to kind of rise to the top of the most important things to be studying for the exam. Um, okay, and that's pretty much that. So I'm going to stop sharing that and then I'll pull up the um, PowerPoint with the trivia, and then we'll just go through that. So that is was meant to be created in a in person class. So there was like a sheet where you we team up. You'd get into like teams of however three or four, and you can answer the questions together. So it was supposed to be more of like an actual interactive game, but it just doesn't work. Doesn't translate very well um, in this platform. So I'm just going to go through and ask the questions one at a time. And um, if you want to just unmute yourself and answer it, or you can put it in the chat, or if it's just a more like something you haven't thought about for a couple of weeks, and nobody that answer isn't really coming to anybody's head right away, then we can just give it a couple minutes and then we can just show the answer. So let me pull that up. But it's not quite as fun as a kahoot. Where are we here? Okay. Oh, I probably already had it down there. I did. Silly me. Okay. Let me share my screen. Yeah, I know. I'm not always good with this either. Like, just random questions that have, you know, especially if it was like seven, eight weeks ago, it's like, what? Okay. Let me get this bigger. I wonder if I can get rid of this here. Okay, nice. Okay. All right, so round one. So it was supposed to be like, anyways, there was different rules to it. So we'll just ignore the rounds. Okay, first question, what is a common suffix of an anti, um, antitensin receptor blocker or ARB? Angiotensin receptor blocker or ARB? I have to pull up the chat to see if. And just if you feel like you might know it or you want to just guess, go ahead and just unmute yourself too. So the suffixes. So we always think of the different suffixes for the hypertension. And this one is the all the allals always come to mind, the pine, the prills, but this one, yes, good. Katerina got it. Sartin. So let here we'll just go to the answer. So sartin is for the ARBs. Angiotensin blockers is sartin. It's just not as common of one. So I think that's why it was put in the <laughs> help. <laughs> okay, question number two. What is the difference between bacteriostatic and bacteriocidal? Cidal death, yeah. Static stop kind of stops and cidal kills, yep. Yeah. Or inhibits growth, yep. Yeah. Tasia, good. Mm hmm. Good, so we'll go down to the answer. So bactericidal kills the bacteria, bacteriostatic inhibits the bacterial multiplication or it stops the growth or inhibits the growth. Good. 
Okay, question, define pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. This is kind of a longer one. It's hard to put the definitions there. But if you can put a few words, maybe kinetics, body on the drugs, dynamics, how the drug works on us. Good. You can think, I always think about kinetics too, as the drug moving around the body. So it's like the absorption, the elimination that gives me that, um, that idea of, of movement because it's absorbing and eliminating and um, kinetics is like movement. So that's like one mind, one thing I've kind of used as a memorization good and then the dynamics is how it how the drug affects our body so what's what's actually happening when the drug gets in there and how it affects our body good pharmacokinetics the way the body affects the drug absorption distribution metabolism excretions pharmacodynamics the way drugs work in living organisms okay. good round two already I'm, I'm afraid there's not very many questions. Advair is a um, combination of which two types of drugs? Advair. Two types of drugs. And this isn't there, but what, what, what condition might somebody have if they're using Advair? Albuterol, everyone's thinking of albuterol, asthma. Mm -hmm. So what two types of medication? Two types of drugs, constrictive. This one's a little harder. This was earlier on. So we're a little probably rusty with our um, restorative. So corticosteroid, anti-inflammatory, the long acting vague, beta agonist. So this is the one um, it's, there's only a, this I think might be the only one actually, the Advair that's combining these types of drugs in this inhaler. So if you're using a corticosteroid inhaler, you're at risk of oral candidiasis as a reminder, but this is somebody who has a lot more um, frequent um, asthma attacks. So they need something that's long acting. And the corticosteroid is um, the anti-inflammatory. So it helps with the inflammation of their bronchioles. Okay, question. What term describes the category of medication used to treat cancer? What term describes the category? cancer treatment, anti-cancer. Like, that makes sense. Anti-cancer, right? Chemo, chemotherapeutics. Let's see. Anti-neoplastics. Who's, oh, Callie put that in there. Good, yes. Anti-neoplasm, so neoplasm, anti-neoplastics. <laughs> that was a hard one. Which neurotransmitters are activated in the pre and post ganglionic neuron of both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system? Which neurotransmitter are activated in the pre and post ganglionic neuron? HCH, acetylcholine, I think so. Sympathetic acetylcholine at the pre, norepinephrine at the post ganglionic neuron, and then parasympathetic, we have acetylcholine at the pre and, and the post. So we have parasympathetic, it's at both the pre and the post, and sympathetic, it's just the pre. So yeah, so acetylcholine is the answer. Good. It's a very fast trivia. Okay, name five characteristics of an ideal sedative. This is why this worked better as a group thing, because some of these are obviously very long. They're not like quick, quick responses, quick recovery, rapid onset. Yep, good. You're like, that's it, quick recovery, rapid onset. Think of any others. 
No side effects. Yeah. Analgesic. What's the one with the amnesia? Let's see. Okay, rapid onset, titration ease. So it can be titrated easily. So they, because some people need more or less than others. Um, Anti-anxiety, I hate that word. I can never say that word very well. Analgesic and then um, rapid recovery or rapid and complete recovery. Good, no side effects. Yeah, that probably goes with the um, rapid recovery analgesic. Good. Okay. What is another term for adrenergic agonist and adrenergic antagonist? What's another term? Adrenergic agonist. So the ad, anything that's adrenergic is in which system? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Yeah, sympathomimetic would be the adrenergic agonist. So sympathetic is what a lot of people, instead of the parasympathetic, it's the sympathetic or a sympatho, um, sympatholotic. Huh, that one is harder. Let's see, did we actually learn those terms? Because like, I'm literally, I was going over those PowerPoints today. I don't remember seeing those words anywhere. Sympathomimetic, yes. But I'm just sitting here the same way going, I don't feel like we used this one. Um, sympatholytic, sympatholytic. So it might have been on a PowerPoint from a guest speaker. Um, we, but, we've definitely used it because I have a flashcard on it on my Quizlet. And I know sympathomimetic for sure. This one I didn't really remember that well either. But yeah. I guess the answer is yes, we have. I need multiple choice, I know. I need to see the answer in front of me and then my brain triggers it. It's like, oh yeah. Okay, what drug classification is used in general anesthesia as well as general anxiety disorders and epilepsy? Anxiety and epilepsy. I see a lot of benzos. <laughs> Benny. Benzodiazepines. Good. <laughs> Benny Henny. <laughs> okay. Name one of the second generation antihistamines. Second generation. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Less side effects, less drowsy. Zyrtec, Allegra, Claritin. Name an antifungal medication that would be used um, to treat candidiasis. There's not very many, so um, good, yeah. There's a there's a couple that, but as far as like our clinical practice um, for oral candidiasis, nystatin would probably be the most common. But then there were these also in the PowerPoint. It talked about the myconazole and the clitrimazole, clitrimazole. But this is the most common one that you'll hear like doctors talk about prescribing. They have lozenges and stuff like that for nystatin. What level of TSH um, indicates hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, how low, high or low? Thyroid stimulating hormone, what level? So if somebody has T, um, thyroid stimulating hormone that is high, 
they have excessive TSH, then do they have Mm hmm because remember it affects the um, T4, the levels. So if they have a lot of TSH, good. Hyperthyroidism is low TSH, isn't it inverse? Okay, here's the answer. So hypothyroidism, so then they have a lot of that, but it's not converting it. And if it's hyperthyroidism, then they have low TSH and it is converting, probably converting too much. But if it's hypothyroidism, then they're not converting to the active, that really active form. So they have a lot of TSH floating around their body, but it's not converting to that real active form. That's a heart. You have to kind of, that's another one of those things where you have to kind of memorize the process of you know what the the whole kind of flow of the whole process and just in order to it's not so easy to answer it just you know like a quick yes or no you kind of have to think about what the body's doing in that process so that's kind of a tricky one okay what drug would be used to treat the manic phase of bipolar the manic phase, so sort of the really super high, euphoric, up, up, up phase. Lithium, yep. So lithium kind of treats that, that increased, that manic state. Round five. Okay, what condition is defined as chronic lung disease characterized by inflammation of the airways and bronchoconstriction? It's defined as chronic lung disease. COVID, maybe. Asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a slowly progressive disease of the airway, which is more characterized by chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Those two together are what makes up COPD, but a chronic lung disease characterized by inflammation and bronchoconstriction. So those two things, because the bronchioles, everything gets, and then you, there's more mucus, that's produced, so things get kind of plugged up. Oops, I went the wrong direction. So asthma is the correct answer. When you think of COPD, it's, um, it is chronic because you can't, it's not going anywhere. Nobody gets cured of COPD, um, but it's um, more of a slowly progressing and it's a combination of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Where are main locations for H1 and H2 receptors? H1, where's the H1 receptors? Mm -hmm, good, yeah. Mm -hmm. H1 is in the lungs, good. H2. Good, H1 is in the lungs, H2 has to do with stomach acid, remember that. So that's what those proton, um, those um, GI drugs with the proton pump inhibitors and, and whatnot, they're working on the H2 receptors. Hey, Leslie, so I just, I, this is an easy question, I just can't remember. So asthma is considered like a chronic um, disease, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure. Yes. Uh, what two medication classes are used to treat gastric ulcers? What two medication classes are used to treat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, the antibiotics. Actually, yeah. Because though with H. pylori, hmm, well, let's see. 
What does the next slide say? So the pro, okay, so the protein pump inhibitors is also going to be um, including antacids. So I think even though the mechanism is slightly different, like some neutralize, but I think the, the, the part of the question here that is supposed to catch you is the ulcers. So usually if someone has an ulcer, yeah, an antacid might help, but it's not going to be it's not going to be used to like treat the ulcer. They're going to write a stronger prescription. And it's usually that two pack. It comes with the PPI, the proton pump inhibitor and the antibiotic, because most of the ulcers are created from um, the bacteria. Uh, they say, you know, some can be from stress and things like that, but like 90% of them, or it was it 80 or 90% of them are from H. pylori. So then it's going to be that combination drug of the PPI and the antibiotics. Okay. Final question. What are ACE inhibitors used to treat? And then what oral side effects might be present in someone taking an ACE inhibitor? So that's a pretty rare, the oral side effect here is not super common, but if it happens, it's usually severe enough that you'd wanna know what it's related to. And then the last part is what is the common suffix of the ACE inhibitors? The prills. Okay, let's see. So the first one, hypertension, a lot of you got that. Angioedema, um, swollen lips, tongue, and throat. It's not a super common side effect, but if it, if it, yeah, <laughs> Kelly, yeah. But if it happens, you'd wanna know the patient would want to know why it's happening. Chances are it wouldn't happen in your dental chair because the patient would take it and they would, um, you know, be in, in communication with their, with their cardiologist or their physician. But still, it's important to know that that's what's attributed. ACE, um, ACE inhibitors and angioedema are, have that kind of connection for the adverse effects. And then prill is the common suffix. Was the common su suffix for ACE inhibitors angiotensin enzyme. So the ACE and the ARB, because I wasn't that one of the first ones, the ARB, angiotensin. Sorry, I'm gonna go flying up to the first question. So I wanna remember what the, yeah. What is the suffix for the angiotensin receptor blockers? That's ARB, which is sartan, and then ACE, angiotensin um, enzyme inhibitors. So that's the ACE inhibitor. Sorry, flying through these. So I think that was the last one. So I'm gonna stop sharing there. And that's really all that I have for today. You guys um, are more than welcome to stay on and uh, ask questions, but I've opened up those um, study guides for you. So if you want to use a little extra time to just work on the myriad of things that you guys have to prepare for, then feel free or, um, you know, so you can start um, reviewing some of this material. The exams that are in ExamSoft right now, I have to whittle them down by half. So I have to go in, there's 50 questions um, from oral med for the morning section, but I have to take away half of them. And then there's 50 questions for the um, case docs, and I have to take away half of those um, because we're just doing a short, like a short version for you guys this year. So um, I'm going to try and just do an even removal of stuff from so that there's still a sprinkling of information from all um, the whole semester. Um, just leave all the easy ones, Leslie, and take away all the really hard ones. <laughs> yes, I know. It's 
I'm just, I'm going to try and leave the big concepts. That's my goal is to leave the big concepts because when you're in practice, you need things need to raise red flags. You're not going to always remember the microscopic detail about something. That's why we have continuing education. That's why we have some of our resources at our fingertips to look stuff up, but you have to have that critical thinking there, you know, like what there's, these are the major things that are associated that cause, you know, some kind of an implication that could affect my clinical practice. So I'm going to try and and just leave the, the bigger concepts for you guys. But um, I know it's, it's, it's just hard because it's, I say, just study everything. Well, there's a ton of stuff. So I do understand the, the conflict. You do have to, you have to know it, but there's a lot to review. So hopefully those guides and then the, just your booklet of study guides, just be as familiar with some of those processes as you possibly can. And I think you guys will do just fine. And just FYI, um, I have gone through and I looked at everybody's grades. Um, if you want to know, I know somebody, one or two people have emailed me and I think I haven't gotten back to them. So just send me a fresh email if you want to know your standing um, on like kind of what you could get on the final, like where, what you have to get on the final. Everybody is passing my course currently. Um, and then if you wanna know, you know, like where you are at, what kind of a grade you'd have to get um, to stay in, in the margin that you're hoping to stay in, um, just email me and, I, and I'll send you back a, um, some numbers. So um, I think that was the last thing I wanted to say. Um, I was also curious if um, I mentioned like about that question last week on the exam about, I think it was about like um, the ladder. Of the oh, yeah. Yeah. I you ever able to look at that. I did. I looked at it and it what it looked like to me was that she focused. It didn't even look to me like she had the same information. Like I didn't see the who ladder on her. PowerPoint and unless I skipped it, but it looked to me like she kind of had things categorized a little bit differently. And just because that is something, and this isn't, I know it's hard because there's so much information. Um, and especially sometimes the, the information that we get from the pharmacy department, they go off of way detail. So I know it's, it's a lot of information, but because that was something on a PowerPoint that was fair game that you're supposed to know. Um, I was looking specifically to see if it um, conflicted, like if the information conflicted and it didn't seem to me that it did. It just seemed like she didn't have the who ladder of the level of analgesic for the level of pain. So I left the, that um, question in. I didn't take that one out. Okay. She didn't have like the who ladder, but she had like a ladder that was on the slide. I, I yeah. Can't send you know, me if you'd like yeah it looks like your who ladder but maybe it didn't say that but it was just like a, the levels of pain yeah. I think you're the same because I had the powerpoints right next to each other and they were exactly the same charts Leslie are we talking about the moderate and severe pain I think so yeah it yeah. was on her powerpoint it clearly says for severe opioid plus non-opioid can let me send you the screenshot. Yeah, send me the screenshot so yeah, I can yeah. see. Because I looked it over and I didn't see a very, it seemed like there was similar information, but it was like written up differently. Um, in a box in the PowerPoint, she said opioid is for the severe plus non-opioid as well. Like she clearly says plus non-opioid. So, so she's saying that for moderate pain it's opioid plus a non-opioid no, uh, for, for both moderate and severe she says opioid plus non-opioid only for mo moderate she says non-opioid oh for mild sorry yeah it said I remember exactly what it said because I made flashcards on it and mm -hmm. so for mild it said non-opioid plus OTC NSAIDs moderate it said non-opioid plus any kind of NSAID that could be prescribed or OTC. Uh -huh. And severe, it said opioid and a non-opioid. It could so that's be. how I memorized it. Okay. okay. So it does kind of sound like it was a little bit contradictory. It could be that 
because that was a who, like a world, like a, the, you know, the World Health Organization, their kind of pain management ladder. And then perhaps in pharmacy, they, they um, are trying to reduce probably opioid dependency. So maybe that's why they're more specifically saying no opioid for moderate. Is that what, is that what I'm hearing? She's just oh. saying combine an NSAID with a like an acetaminophen or something. Leslie, I'm putting a screenshot right now in the chat. Okay. For PowerPoint. Is it there? Am I supposed to see it? I don't uh, I'm still uploading it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Angela did ask though, when assignment two will be graded? Um, that's a wonderful question. Um, it will hopefully be graded sometime this week. I think grades actually have to go into the book because I have, it's a lot of reading. That's the problem with assigning things where people write. So you have to read it all and it takes a while. So um, grades have to go into the grade book, I think um, week 16 at the end of, I wanna say like the end of week 16. So I'll probably read some of them this week, but then I'll probably read more of them next week because I have far less to do next week. So they're kind of low on my priority list because I wanna make sure that I get everything else done, but I will, um, I have to get the final um, all squared away. And um, I have to, I'm just in charge with all the faculty have taken turns being in charge of the final and I'm in charge of this one. So I have to just make sure all the attachments are uploaded correctly and it's in the right place. So I have a little bit of work to do with that. Um, so that's kind of, kind of first priority before I get to the assignment too. But I will definitely start them this week and probably finish them next week. Leslie, I'm not able to do it here on the chat, so I'm emailing it to you. Do you just, even if you told me the slide number, that would help too. Okay. I probably could have just looked at it while we were. Uh, it's, uh, I just took a, just closed it looks like. Let's see, so this is on the, this is on the lecture from Like Jessie. the only PowerPoint we have under week 13. Okay. And then which, um, so do you have, do you know what slide number it is? Yeah, I'm opening it again. It's slide, slide 24, Leslie. 24, okay. Hmm. I don't think I'm looking at the same thing as you guys are. On 24, like there is a, a red box that says opioid for moderate to severe pain plus non opioid. Yeah. That is not what I'm looking at, huh? Which I'm gonna, so I'm gonna share my screen of the um, Moodle page. Okay. And then you guys show, you guys tell me which one. Leslie, I found the slide. Did you find it? So here's week 13. So I was clicking on guest yeah, PowerPoint. It's that no, one. The one below that. Oh, the one below it. It's slide 40 on my slide that I have saved. Oh, this one, the pain management and general anesthesia. That's the one you guys are looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then which number here? I have it under slide 40. 
It was the Merlo Dental Pain Management and Sedation. That doesn't look right. Well, yeah. so I think Tasia is talking about the pain management and GA one that you did, but Avalon is talking about the PowerPoint from the guest speaker. So they are talking about both of them. I have both of them pulled up right now. So they're both, they're talking about two separate presentations, but I think Tasia's was on slide 24 for the mm -hmm. one that like Holly did. And then Avalon's was slide 40 from the guest PowerPoint. So this one says, Severe should be level three, opioid for moderate to severe pain, plus a non-opioid. Yeah. Opioid for mild to moderate, plus a non-opioid, and then non-opioid for mild. So this yeah. is the one that has come from like Amy, Holly, these, that's what they've taught, but that's, you're saying, now I want to look at the guest because you're saying the guest has a different- guest is the one that I did all of my studying off of because okay. the the format made a little bit more sense to me because it was more wordy. Mm -hmm. That's how I learn. So I thought that I could like choose to like study off of one. One of the other. Yeah. So it's the it was the Merlot this PowerPoint. One. And it's slide 40. And it's slide 40. Okay. I just mostly I would give the point back if they contradict each other because that's not very helpful if the two because you are responsible for all the information but if the information is contradicting each other then that's not very fair so that's what i'm trying to figure out mild apa and an nsaid moderate okay so she doesn't have any opioid for a moderate and then severe consider opioid. And I think that the reason, okay, so I'll give, I'll give a point back for that question. I think the reason is, and I'm going to have to contact the, mm -hmm. the pharmacy department, because that's kind of a good question, is the, like, the who ladder is kind of like a World Health Org, so it's everybody is saying, you know, if they're moderate pain, that they'll, you, you can use an opioid. So, like, say, you know, like Percocet or Tylenol 3, those are for, so like you get your wisdom teeth out and you're given a prescription for Tylenol 3 or codeine, which is basically, you know, that's a stronger, you know, that's not just um, acetaminophen or an NSAID, it's actually has um, the opioid. So it's, so it's, and that's moderate pain, right? So there she has hers, down as that sort of eliminated. And I'm wondering if that's sort of a new emerging standard because they don't, they're trying to reduce the opioid dependency that's in the United States. So maybe now for prescribing reasons for um, physicians and pharmacists, maybe they're saying moderate pain, you can get, because I have heard in the literature, they have said that you can get just as much pain relief from combining like acetaminophen and an NSAID as you can from using an opioid with something else. So maybe that's kind of the new emerging model. So that's going to need to be updated. I might have to just remove that who ladder altogether, but I'm going to reach out and ask them in pharmacy if that's kind of the new Thing that's being taught because that does kind of it contradicts itself so we get like clarification on what we should put to for like the feet like the final just mm -hmm. that's just how I like learned it and it made more sense to me because we talked a lot about not prescribing opioids and like mm -hmm. when I got my like wisdom teeth extracted like I refused to take like the stronger drugs that they gave me because I just wanted to take ibuprofen so it's, I don't know that's mm -hmm. just how I learned it and if I'm wrong then I'm wrong and that's fine but well I don't think you're wrong because this is coming from pharmacy so I'm just trying to figure out if if that who ladder is sort of outdated and then I'll just take it off of the PowerPoint for next year altogether so I just have to figure that out but I don't think you're wrong because they I mean it's she says it right here for moderate pain you know a simple fracture even but a severe so I'm just wondering, I'm just curious as to where wisdom teeth fall into this or like dental procedures, 
what would this look like in dental? So she's asking, but I'm like, I'd like to know. Because when I worked for Dr. Um, Matsuda and they did perio surgery, um, we he would offer a mild pain, like something with an opioid in it, but, and just a, sm a small prescription to get them through like a couple days. And then they say, then the rest, you know, like maybe two days or something. And then the rest of the time they would take like an NSAID or maybe a, con but he would tell them if you combine Tylenol and ibuprofen um, together, you're going to get just as much analgesic effect as if you would with an opioid. So that may be the new kind of emerging model is to just get patients to take that as opposed to giving them something an opioid because of the the abuse potential Leslie, so, but mm -hmm. i was going off the other powerpoint not this one mm -hmm. just the one i think holly made mm -hmm. even there in the powerpoint it says non-opioid for mild mm -hmm. and then uh, moderate uh, mild to moderate and moderate to see where you give an opioid plus non-opioid that's more what i'm used to and i feel like that's more what has historically has been done but i think that this powerpoint from our guest speaker is probably more like what they're teaching now so i'll get clarification on sort of what the new the new guidelines would be for that and and then also so so i i got that like wrong on the test because i said moderate to severe would be opioid plus non-opioid Oh, so, so I don't yeah. know what the right answer is. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just give everybody credit for that question. I'll just make it like a, everyone gets a hundred percent. But technically, so the correct, so the correct answer from before we even had this conversation, if we were just going by the PowerPoint, it would be a level two, so that it would be an opioid plus a non-opioid pain medication. So either, so like the Vicoprofen here has the acetaminophen or the aspirin with Vicodin or the oxycodone has um, the acetaminophen for the Percocet or the Percodin for the aspirin. So it's like, so they're different drugs, they're called different drugs, right? Based on what kind of opioid and what kind of non-opioid. So that's what would classically be used for mild to moderate pain. So that's what I'm thinking of. Like wisdom teeth extraction would land in this level two, and you'd get this kind of medication. Level three is it would be just the opioid for moderate, so moderate closer to severe. So I think it's like a gray line. That's why moderate shows up in both. Mm -hmm. But I think in the question, it was just mild, moderate, or severe. So mm -hmm. I would just de defer to the, the heart, you know, whatever is the more, um, the worst one. So like mild, moderate, and then this would be severe pain, and this would just be an opioid. But because this ladder, this who ladder may be not what is used in medical practice now to, for prescribing pain medication, I'm just going to give everyone the point for this. But technically, um, Teja, to mm -hmm. be right, you would have put level two. Okay. So mild is non-opioid. For moderate, it's opioid plus non-opioid. Mm -hmm. And for severe, it's opioid. That's yeah. the right answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, she put, she didn't put that in her PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. So it does, it is contradicting. But yeah, as, as far as this the course's original powerpoint that's what it would have been non-opioid level one opioid plus non-opioid level two and full opioid level three okay boy that's a tricky one well it doesn't help that the powerpoints didn't quite match up so okay i'm gonna stop sharing there and then oh the McKenna said that's what's on Amy's Quizlet. The the ladder, you mean the who ladder? For no, the on Amy's Quizlet, she said uh, it's opioid plus on opioid for CV as well. Um, so on Amy's Quizlet, it says moderate is an opioid mixed with a non opioid, and then severe is an opioid. Oh, on on Amy's Quizlet, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I read somewhere, though, I don't know if this is in my other research or if this was in like a tool provided to me by one of you instructors, but I read also that um, like anytime there's like a worry about opioid abuse, though, they might do a lower 
um, amount of opioid mixed with a non-opioid. Like that's always the better way to go if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and I think that is probably why I'm kind of thinking I'll probably end up just going with what the um, Dr. Malo has for her information, because I even remember that in practice and in CE courses that I've taken prior to leaving private practice, that there was kind of a talk about going, you either step down to the lowest dose or the lowest um, opioid prescription you possibly can, or just recommend the combination of um, an NSAID and a like acetaminophen or aspirin or something, just because um, studies have shown that it gives just as good analgesic um, response. So, and then you don't have the, you know, the addictive part of it at all or the abusive part. So I'm sort of leaning towards, I'll probably just have to update the PowerPoints with that new guidelines, but I have to find out for sure exactly how to, um, how to write it out. Anybody have any other questions on anything? If not, you guys are um, free to go. I will um, get this um, uploaded into the class here in just a minute. It just has to like go through its little video processing thing and then I'll get it put into Moodle. And then um, just email me with any questions that you have at all. Before Thanks, Betsy. You're welcome. Have a good rest of your day, you guys. Leslie, you said yeah. you were posting the um, questions.